Hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yeah. Every day seems the same. Keep getting lost. I have to step away lines up well, see what day it is. Anyway, a bit dull today, no sunshine but quite warm. Um, and we're going to do a watercolour. And as a few of you already guessed online, when I put the image on, it's actually Top Lock, which is uh, on the way to Hay Hall, which is down the path, down the canal, we're in the opposite direction. That means there's no more locks after this one. And then you come down, if you turn left here, you go all the way to Ince, uh, higher Ince, lower Ince, and then into Wigan. And that's where I was born, more or less, in that area. And I used to play on the canal all the time. Uh, and uh, I love going up there, actually. Um, a beautiful sunny day as well. So lots of warm colours. Um, there's a little cottage on the right here. I don't know who lives there, but it's uh, it's just secluded. There's a little bridge going over. And if you go this way under the bridge, it's a dead end. It's where the barges used to park up and they park up, they kind of um, they move up all the way down the canal in this direction as well to here. Oh, and there's actually toilets at the top there so for the people on the um, narrow boats, not barges. The barges used to carry cotton and coal. Okay, so today we're doing this image. Um, got some lovely colours in there. This is um, Dove Cottage actually, a picture I did for a demonstration at uh, Preston once, <coughs> using the same colours more or less. Um, cabin yellow, burnt sienna, quite a bit of burnt sienna. Um, alizarine crimson, giving you a cool red. Uh, ultramarine blue for purples. Uh, viridian green and ultramarine mixed together. Uh, burnt sienna and viridian mixed for warm greens. Uh, quite a bit of salt, some pigeons or whatever you got. And that's about it, that's another kind of same colours, very, very kind of loose technique, which is what I want to do today. Uh, one of uh, Pembrokeshire, yeah, Timber's just right in the corner. Um, St. Govan's Head, I think it's St. Govan's Church. Beautiful view. Uh, another one that's from um, where we should be this weekend, at the Nightingale Centre in Great Hooklow, but um, we've had to cancel. I know for we're going at the end of July, but I can't see it myself. But if we're not, we're going next year. So again, lots of lovely textures in there. Uh, I love what the salt has done to these green trees. Uh, I've seen that before. That's um, anyway. We'll carry on. Um, on me on today. Everybody's gone out. Lynn's gone to the tip, queuing up for three hours. Apparently, it's very busy, and you have to take your uh, a utility bill to say you live here because <laughs> they're coming out to the area. Okay, everyone. Yeah, there's a few there, so. Anyway, this is the image. We don't have to do it exactly like the image. We've got some lovely, they've got a lovely tree there. It's a hawthorn or, uh, but it's very, very light. It's not quite white, but it's kind of creamy. And uh, there's a few clouds in the background we can actually leave out and make them bigger to make it a bit more interesting in the sky. Um, we've got the cottage, which is actually going away from me because I'm stood slightly higher, uh, well, I'm not actually. I think I came down from the bridge. I took that photograph. So this is my image. If you look in the distance where the canal disappears, that's about where the horizon line is, which is correct. Because if you take a line straight across, it, you just cut the windows near enough in half, yeah? And that's where you get the straight line, that, where the horizon is. And then anything above the horizon goes down to meet it. So the top of the roof, the bottom of the roof. is that Anything below, like the fence, the water line, and this uh, the tow path here, uh, this is a sunken barge, sunken barge for moving up things, I don't know. Um, it's been there ages, it's all rusty, which is great with the salt. And then you got your reflections and your blue sky, uh, cerulean blue we're going to be using as well, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, got some new colour there, give it a squirt, because um, I've not been using them quite a lot lately. Always squirt the colours so you can get they get going. Uh, before you uh, actually use them, uh, they'll put some more in there. Okay, um, clean water, quite a bit of salt, like I said. I've uh, got some goulash in case I need it. Goulash, yeah. Um, I've just been trying out a technique using a, to try and get this lovely, uh, some of these trees, which is using this um, uh, squirrel hair brush. And you shouldn't really do this, but 
I've seen some people using, um, and you just scrunch it all up like that, and then when you push it upwards, you get these lovely branches, um, trees, and you can push it the other way as well. And it's a regular shape, so I'm going to have a do it and see what uh, we can uh, achieve with a, a funny squirrel hair brush, okay? Um, and then I've got my uh, lovely brush that I use. Um, my brain's not working today. Spanish um, mix of sable, um, uh, this squirrel hair, and uh, my other three, which is my flat filbert, and a thin, very fine uh, rigging, rigging brush, rigging brush, and a sable as well, just a nice point. Um, Escoda, couldn't remember the name then for the life of me, left my head. Okay, the Escoda brush, which is lovely, lots of water, can cover the whole picture in one go. But first thing I'm going to do is sketch it. It's 12 o'clock now, we'll probably finish before. Um, one o'clock now, sorry, my old clock, so there we are, and uh, we'll probably finish before two. So I, like I've just said, we can actually sketch. So I'll probably use a pen as well in this one. Uh, we need to know where the horizon line is, like I said, but if I take a line just below halfway line on my piece of paper, because it's the same, it's the kind of the same format as, if I take a line there and take it straight across, that's going to be my horizon line, so that is where the canal is going to finish. Uh, there is a little verge there actually, you can put it uh, narrow board, I should say, which is just at the bottom of the canal where that, uh, and there's some trees behind it, but I'll do that later. So from that this vanishing point, uh, if I take a line, if I had this line going all the way across like through the windows there, and then t from here, I've got the other side of the canal, I've got where all this kind of uh, um, green of it is, floating on the water and whatever, whatever you, and then I've got the corner so you can actually break it up into your window area and as I come down you can even get the fence in if you like but it's getting a bit complicated then but that's the other side of the canal so that would be about here and then about here is where the reeds are well that's not that's about where the reeds are on the other side of the canal and then I get this lovely green uh, floating on top of the canal but if I draw a line then to there that is actually where the water meets uh, the land on the other side of the canal yeah and if you take a line from that like you use your pencil and you kind of bring it round like that because that's the other side of the bank so this is what gives you that angle you can see so you've got the angle there and this one comes up from about here where this um, pontoon is, if you like, um, coming that way and across, and then the, the um, this side of the bank, uh, the walkway just comes to about here, which is that distance. So if you measure on your paper where things are, you'll end up with, you know, straight lines, man-made objects. So it's they're all straight lines, yeah. Anything that's built or straight area. Water is always level anyway, so it always makes its own straight line. Don't try, don't do curves, try and do straight lines, and then, because um, it creates zigzags. Uh, so about here is where this lovely tree is going to be, and it actually comes down to the water's edge, so I can put that in, and it's behind this pontoon. So if I put the pontoon down of there, and then just a few shapes on it like that, Nice and rough sketch first. Uh, keep everything level. There's little things happening. Don't know what it is, but we've got the side of the pontoon and then the bank here. And when we do these um, lovely big stones uh, at the side of the bank, you've got every now and again you've got the where they join together. Yeah, and naturally as they go further away, they go kind of nearer. So if you wanted to put some of those in, you can do. It just adds to a bit of re realism in your foreground because that's the width of your stones and every, anything over here where the shadows are is going to be wider because you're getting more of that happening again so straight line and then you're getting less of a so as it goes further away it's thinner okay so that's the blue area and this tree is going to kind of come down and like a weeping willow over the top so this is lovely horse chestnut i think it may be that we've grown again 
And then from that, we've also got, so that's the window, the fence is about here, uh, that fencing, as you can see. And we've got things happening there. So from that point, and it goes just behind a conifer, which is about halfway. Um, we can move things and we can make things taller. Yeah? And that conifer goes in front of the window and then it goes behind the fence, which is here, and it casts a shadow. Uh, down to these uh, rushes which are about there because that's the canal or uh, at the top of this um, fence there and then your windows so your windows are there you can see where it comes down to some kind of greenery on the fence there just coming over uh, you can you can see the thickness inside the window and it is open so you can open the, the light and it's squares so you could just paint the squares later yeah you don't have to leave the white of the paper, you know, some people will try. But the top of that window is going up and the bottom of the window is coming down slightly, but it's ever so slightly. And because I'm chopping this window off on the picture, I'm going to move it a bit. Because we're artists, we can do what we want. So I'm going to move it over slightly. Uh, there is a bit of a tree there as well. I'm going to move it over slightly. It's on the same level as the other window. Uh, you can make, open the light again if you like and then we've just got the squares again which are going away from you like that which we can paint against that and just above the window the top of the window about here is where you get the roof and the roof is going up so again we're going down to that horizon line uh, we've got this the shape of the conifer against the sky and the roof yeah and then the top of the roof is it again is going slightly up as well that should be less actually i'm going a bit too steep and then as you get to the roof again that's wider there than it is there it's actually disappearing behind the conifer but we can't see it again the chimney i'll bring the chimney on because i can't i like chimneys it is at the back of the roof and it's going that way and then we just put these uh, uh chimney pots on so we can keep that a bit nearer something like that it is a bit higher the other one um We've got that shadow, so from the uh, underneath the roof, we've got the shadow, uh, there's some there making a the shadow as well. Okay, and then the greenery, lots of kind of uh, reeds here, and then this lovely uh, green, which is floating on the water, like that. It's a lovely colour, it's, it's, it's reflecting all the sunlight and absorbing the sunlight, and it's got this lovely shadow. So here we've got the reeds as well so this tree needs to reflect into the, the canal as well and um, we've got these shapes yeah if you notice it's darker than the sky okay and all the light is hitting the top of this conifer so it's a regular shape and then we've got conifers in the background in the distance a kind of a bluey green you've got a bit of a, a garage there which is just if you want to put it in doesn't matter if you don't want to so it's just behind the fence and then a tree like that again behind that fence and other things going on uh lovely shadows from this uh this tree and uh, that's a lot of dirt there as we come over to the white area uh quickly sketching and then here we've got some more trees going away and then in the distance we've just got these little shapes all right so our reflections in the water because that comes down to the pontoon where you get the pontoon as well you get these little where they uh, tie the boats up you know what they're called the uh, uh, capstans something like that and then you tie the boats up you've got a few shadows in there as well and then we've got these lovely shadows on the floor speckled sunlight again which we're going to make so i don't know if you can see that i'm not going to draw that tree i'm going to use a pen so you can actually see uh the outline. So if you sketch first, because these trees are coming down to the water's edge, more or less like that. Yeah. So if you sketch it first, and then when you're happy with the composition, you can use a pen. So if I start over here again, just sketch it in roughly, like that. and we rub out the pencil. Then we can, if we need to use any whites, we can use whites, but uh, we don't have to. And that's going behind the tree. So that's this front of the roof, and then the shadow, and this. The windows, like that. we could use wax on the windows to keep. I know you people who love having white uh, window panes, uh, 
you can use a bit of white so you can actually put some goulash in. Uh, you've got curtains there as well, so let's kind of go put the plant pots there and put their curtains. Uh, this lovely shadow, top of the fence, green of it hanging over like that. Reeds, nice and loose. Conifer, middle, and then all these shapes coming out from the conifer into the roof. You do not need to kind of rub all your fence away because sometimes I like to see it sometimes. Where it's, uh, so this is the top of the fence there, and that's coming down to the. And then I get these lovely shadows on the fence from the tree, from the conifer. Okay, and they're, they're coming out like, you know, so you're getting these shapes coming out at you, and then the green away as you hit the water's edge as well. So keep that nice and loose, don't have it too fussy. Top of the fence. Uh, the garage, which is slightly going away from you because it's, uh, it's above the horizon line. This lovely hawthorn, if you did the hawthorn. Um, shadows coming down, reflected in the water like that. And then the trees in the background, which we could a little bit nearer. And then the trees going away from us. Don't have to be spot on. That's the water level. Uh, that's the trees in the distance. Uh, that's the little narrowboat that's mirrored up further along the canal as it changes, turns a corner, that disappears, so you can't see anything there. And there we've got the capstans on here, which make a nice shape actually, as they're in shadow from the pontoon, and then we get a few of these um, of the big paves, concrete side of the canal, just make a gap in between, and there if you want to put this, you know, where the grass comes up to it, you can do. Uh, the shape here where you get this, um, the, the dark area and the light, uh, the metal, and it's also got a reflection. So you're getting reflections there. Yeah. So you can carry on into the water. Uh -huh. Got a lovely dark line. This is coming this way. That's about it. Nothing too fussy. And then you're getting the reflection from the tree. So when you paint the trees later, and this shape, which is this tree here, coming into the water and then you get the reflections from uh, there's like a bush behind the fence uh, something hanging over the fence but you've also got this reflection of it in the water there as well as then it blends into this conifer yeah lovely all right you happy good if you're painting along i'll slow down a bit uh, if you're painting along that's about all you need to sketch yeah all you need uh, like I said, if you want to put um, a bit of wax on anything, um, what would you put it on? I've got clothes, but don't draw the clothes because you're going to see the pen line. You just leave some uh, light, uh, white paper or a bit of purple or sienna, whatever you want to do. You don't have to draw the roof tiles because they're in the distance. And it's too much information because it's the other side of the canal. So you want more information here in the foreground and less at the other side of the canal yeah because it's going away from you so yeah they did a pig because it's um nature and everything is nature is so that's the tree coming down there but i won't bother that if you wanted to kind of rub out like i said i can use a rubber to rub out these uh pencil marks like that and so you just if you were going to put some wax on the windows i suggest you do rub out your pencil marks because you get a big black smudge, all right, all right. Sometimes it smudges anyway. Uh, where the tree is, just get that nice shape. A lot of that's going to be kind of white paper, and then the conifer and that doesn't matter. Keep it loose, nice loose. And you can actually see, which I've not got, uh, the reflection of the roof in the water, which is coming this way slightly. It's actually got the chimney on as well, so get the roof and the chimney. Yeah, I'm just bummed in here. Near enough. Okay, <laughs> so it's near enough. This might be a bit further over, but nothing too fabulous. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'll put some wax on just to show you. Now, if I put some on the edge of the window frame and the white bars in the window and the edge, a uh, bit on the bottom of your bits of wax just where the light is coming out and then the bars in the window frame and these little squares uh, just be careful you don't go too thick okay nothing really 
there is some caravans in the yard, but uh, they're going behind the trees, so in the garden, I think, at the back. They're going behind the trees, so I'm not bothering with those. Artistic license, you can do what you want. You can put in what you want to put in. Yeah? Uh, these, this is a nice shadow, it gives you a step down and then it goes into the water and then it comes this way again. So you're getting that lovely shape, which is a negative space. Hook it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a drink. It's behind me. Uh, a minute. I'll just keep checking my video, see if it's still going. And <clears throat> because that's nearly white, that area, I'm going to leave it for now. But I want to put my yellowy greens in. I always find the best way of doing the yellowy greens is to put the yellow in first and then just add some green. Because if you treat all this area as a yellowy green area and this side, and you've got some in the water here where the pontoon is, you know, so you can drop that in as well as sienna and alizarine into anything that's like that concrete. Because you've, you've got alizarine in the roof and a bit of blue. If you look at the tiles, you get a purplish tone. You've got bird sienna and a bit of alizarine in the, in the red brick and the chimney. So these are kind of really warm colours. And then as you add the shadows, it starts to make it too. Uh, it starts to come out from the picture. Um, so I'm not starting with my sky and I'm not starting with the water because the blue then will mix with my water and then I won't get the strong yellows I like, I want to get. You know, so as long as you're aware of where. So first thing I'm going to do is pick up some cadmium yellow. Like that. It's nice and strong. It might be, actually, I think I've put a bit. Sometimes it's worth it to put some... Um, um, artist quality pigment with it. So, but if you don't want to use loads and you don't want to, you know, to use it up, then just add a bit of artist quality to your cadmium. I mean, you can do anything. When people say, "Oh, you can't do that. You have to use one of those," but you don't. You know, you can do what you want. Yeah. You know? The beauty of painting is trying different ways of doing things. So I've got a uh, ultramarine blue. I'm gonna mix everything. It's ready to throw in as long as my salt's at hand as well and cerulean blue that's a nice sky colour and it's also in the water in places especially in the distance cerulean blue warmer colour so I'm viridian greens quite a bit of that and I'm going to drop that in to my yellow later so we've got some tissue as well because I want to keep that nice uh, clean area when you pick your colours up I always use a smaller brush kind of you know I don't want you using a big brush and add water to it so it's already mixed, something like that, in your pan, you know that, you can see it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is pick my beautiful cadmium yellow up. And like I said, it's coming from about here and it's going right across the picture, like that. And it's also going into the water and you can leave areas like that. Add some green to that, like this. So this is a bit of viridium. And it will give you some of that lovely kind of green and let it blend and run into it yeah and into the water area and at the top of the fence everything like that and the same color is actually over here like that drop that in and drop it into the canal like this it's got this lovely yellowy color okay i'm going to throw some uh, salt as you may know as you may have guessed so I've got this really nice uh, warm colour which is going to link two of things together. Uh, to take off the edges in places, lost and found edges, yeah. Uh, we're going to have darker green in there because it's reflective and whatever. That is really the strongest, brightest colour in the picture. Okay, so if I get my salt, throw it into the foliage, uh, throw it into the reeds, um, the top of the water. Things like that. I say in there. Again, you're probably sick of seeing me doing all this kind of splattering techniques, but you get irregular marks, and because it's nature, they're actually what we want. Yeah, irregularity in places. Uh, it's just following the course of well, that fence is nearly white, so it doesn't really matter. And if you need to lighten or darken things later, you can do a lot of glazing, can't you? You can do lots and lots of great glazing. If I just look at my, um, my tree, the white one, actually, I'm just going to get a bit of blue and green and do this. 
because I'm going to leave a lot of this tree as my white paper. Uh, if you mix sienna as well with viridian, you get a really strong, nice, strong green tone, which uh, comes out like that, and it's underneath the tree. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just kind of blobbing that in again. That's a technical turn into this underside of the tree, and I can go into the sky with it the side of the tree as well. So when you paint around this, you've also got some lovely shadows there. Uh, and they're quite blue actually, so if you do that bit, uh, add a bit of cerulean, I'm going to leave that then to uh, work into the rest of the picture. You can let it run a bit into uh, the canal if you want to, or you can just leave it, because it doesn't really matter, you're going to do the, uh, the rest of the trees behind things, okay? So while that's, um, and it gets flashes and whatever, it doesn't matter, there could be midges, yeah, mid-season, uh, coming out. So I'm looking at my bird sienna, just need to clean a little bit, bird sienna area for my, uh, uh, my house, cottage, like that. And it's very, it's quite warm because if I kind of do something like that, and then I'd uh, go up to the tree, don't go over it. And then you can take the bits off. You can let it run into the picture if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm going to add some alizarine into that because that's the colour of the brick as well. And let it run. Let it run down the side of the house, top of the fence, top of the fence in the in the foreground, and leave the tones to blend together. So you go up to the window. Uh, don't paint the window. And just leave that. If you get a lot of blobs. Take them off with your brush like that. Soak up the blobs. And then we're doing the same kind of thing with the roof. Uh, so I've got this lovely alizarine and bit sienna mixed together. Like that. Leave it. And then the alizarine and ultramarine blue will give me this really nice uh, kind of uh, tiled roof effect. So you put that on and then add blue to it. All right. And if you look at the picture, it's got kind of blue areas and then it's got uh, alizarine areas. If you put it in the top and just let it blend. Uh, lots of water at this stage. When I put the shadows in that building, it's going to come alive, okay? It's going to start coming alive. So this is the reason I start using lots of warm colours uh, first, because I want to keep it warm. It doesn't matter if you go into your fence. The fence is probably going to be a kind of... Uh, ultramarine, uh, cerulean blue and a bit, bit of burnt sienna that gives you a, a, a kind of greyish tone which is similar to that and um, but I've got some nice um, shadows in there anyway it doesn't matter if it runs that's what will happen you'll get the textures of the building because when it rains it's going to come down the, uh, down the walls yeah uh, the pontoon is the same colour so again Bird sienna, alizarine, mixed together kind of thing. I'm going to use a lot of salt here. You, you, you don't have to do it kind of everywhere. Although, saying that I am doing. Uh, it's quite dark on this side. It's in the water as well. Yeah, you're getting that shape. My yellow's disappeared a little bit. So I want that to stand out more. Just at the bank, at the side of the bank. And that's going to be green. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then this side of the bank, more of that kind of a bird to see enemy feel to it. So it's like a big uh, jigsaw puzzle. I'm just doing these little shapes. Because it's rust as well, you throw some natural salt in it. Yeah, things like that. It also helps to soak up. You can do a bit of that, splattering, blowing. Yeah, all these little gimmicks, someone said. And then... We can look around. I could put the garage in because it's nothing, nothing there. It's just like the side of the garage is a bit of warm. Uh, the front is dark. Uh, so if we put them in first and then there's things in the background. Uh, you've got a bit of the fence showing and these dark trees are going to come out later. I need to do the sky before I actually do the trees because I want the trees to go over the sky. Yeah? Uh, and when I get to here, I'm going to paint around this white one. Okay. <clears throat> you can splatter that, it's covered quite a bit up there, because it's. but if you splatter it with water as well, you'll get these little marks 
Um, if we can bring it back a little bit and salt there, <coughs> create the texture. Leave that a bit, concentrate on our sky. Sometimes, which I haven't done, but <laughs> could have done, uh, I can still do it. If I put a line of wax here on the top of the roof, it stops the water in the sky running into it. But I've actually got a big cloud there, so I won't do it anyway. But you can do that if you wanted. Uh, you've also got some, like I said, things in the distance. And so the only wax is actually on the, the windows, which you'll only see when you start to bring out the... Uh, there's a bit of a, a rope there as well. You can scratch that out. And uh, some clothing and whatever. And, yeah, that's it. and the blue in the background is quite nice. So when you do the sky, uh, they love the sky and they come down... Create, try and create a dawn so it's darker in the background. It's uh, darker at the top, lighter in the distance. We'll come around some of these clouds, just keep them nice little uh, fluffy shapes in the distance. Uh, <coughs> if you want to, and then use the same colour in this blue area at the back, you know. And we can just, when we do the, the reflections in the water later, we can actually add this as well because it's cerulean blue and ultramarine blue, and we can come all the way over here. Again, we can use the, uh, sorry, the, um, this should be a bit of a lizard in it actually. The colour of the uh, roof, brain's not working, come on brain work. Um, colour of the roof, lots of water, and that's reflected in the, uh, in the water. Uh, so we've got this dark shape, which actually goes into the shapes between these, um, Floating plants and whatever, and a bit of reddish sienna there, but it doesn't really matter. Just drop that in, okay? Because that's reflecting of the the roof actually. Yeah. So clean your palette. Make sure you've got a big space to do your sky, because you always need enough water. And I don't usually bother about clean water, although I've got another jar, but. Uh, I'll just get my big brush out and put some into uh, some clean water. I'll get some cerulean blue again, mix it in the palette like that. And then I'm going to add ultramarine to that, which gives me a kind of a cobalt blue. But I can use cobalt blue if you want, but I can concentrate on how much, how much of the blue I get, you see. So that's why I kind of mix them together. And there we go. Across this, uh, don't worry about this tree too much because it's um, in the distance. It's uh, cool, so I can bring the bluey, uh, cerulean blue, and ultramarine down. And once it's dark, there I can go into it to darken it more. Like that. And then as I'm coming down, start cleaning your brush a little bit, and then just add water. We'll go around this tree, add water so you get these clouds in the distance. You need to soften some of these clouds so they're, uh, they're behind things, yeah. Um, and again, we've got clouds at the back there, which are nice and soft. And then here we've got more of these. Uh, so because it's wet, I can do quite a bit. As soon as it starts to dry, you can't do anything. You have to glaze it, okay. So I'm going to just bring that down a bit to the trees and just uh, take it off. <coughs> If you want to lift off little bits of clouds in the distance, now's the time to do it really, but not a lot there. So I've missed some out here, which will do, will actually be of like um, little clouds. And then if you want to add a bit of a lizard into some blue, uh, you can actually paint some of the shapes in the clouds using a lot of water. Create these, um, some of the shadows that you see in, inside the clouds there. Take the blobs off, uh, soften edges, because uh, they'll disappear. Just look where the light's coming from in the cloud, and then keep it light on one side, and then it slightly disappears on the other. Yeah? Soften the edge, it's more realistic. And then add a few uh, shadows uh, on the sides of the cloud, so the trees are going to be in front of that. Uh, that's going to be... A bit of blue there between the leaves of that conifer. Okay. Um, again, I've got quite a bit of water there as well. I'm just going to splatter that to give me some uh, seagulls. Now you can take the water off with the tissue 
and get these like lines. If you wanted to put the lines in, say you've got um, it's like there's an airplane just been, yeah. So you can actually just take out a, a line like that with your brush in the sky if you want to. I always think it's going a bit too far. Away. Anyway, I've got some cerulean, a lot of water again. So I'm going to use the same colours in the canal. So here we're going down into the canal. We can leave little bits of light. You don't have to do it all like that. And that's going into the reflections of your trees. Uh, when I wet that again after, it's all going to blend together. So keep it nice and light because uh, I want it to be very fine lines in the distance going away from you. I'm just going down to the pontoon. Yeah? Uh, you, you can add a bit more because the, the wind's catching and giving you some uh, some ripples in the distance. So you can go a bit further there. And then when we get to the foreground bit, I'm going to just add a bit of blue again together. Uh -huh. And we can wet the whole thing. If you're frightened of just painting something, uh, you know, just wet it. Uh, you can go over this tree because it's dark and it goes up to the cottage like that. So go to, up to the roof, up to the side of the canal bank there. So all this is wet. I'm going to just go round that tree and into the green there. Okay. And it's quite dark this one. So I've got a lot of kind of uh, cerulean and a bit of ultramarine mixed to it. And if we start here, use more cerulean actually. Start there with a lot of water and just let, let it run and drop. Um, the background is going to be nice and dark. So I'm going lovely and dark here. It wants to run down the paper, yeah? So you let it, let it run down the paper. And as you come up to the sky here, uh, we can paint around some of the tree and then go into the side of the tree, but it will only go, the water, the, um, the canal or the water, the blue, will only go with wet the paper. So that's the uh, main idea behind it. Uh, so we want it slightly darker as you get to uh, the foreground bit where the stones are. I love the big side of the canal. <coughs> okay, uh, add a few dark bits because it's got reflections on the water. So again, these shapes, so you can go a little bit darker like that. <laughs> I'm not going to do the stone. You can actually put in because these. Um, the stone effect is a bit of sienna, blue and alizarine, so you're getting these uh, nice warm areas here. And then we're going, uh, it's not far off, it's very light actually. Um, take the bobs off, saw that in town. Don't add any water at the bottom, you'll go that way and you'll make lots of runs. Yeah? And we don't want lots of runs, not going upwards. Um, unless you want to, so you can tell it up to. Just to show you, while it's drying a little bit, um, there are next phase of mid-tone value. Not done any trees yet, but I'll show you what happens once we start to use uh, some of our dark. So because this is dry now, yeah, I'm going to just add a shadow under the roof like that. A bit more water to that. <laughs> And here we've got the, the tree, which is, so we we'll come up to the bottom of the roof, you see, uh, there's a bit of light from something that's coming out from the corner of the roof there. I know we've got a tree here, we don't have to put it all in. And then um, we get to the windows, we've got some lovely shadows. Uh, the windows, we've got kind of three squares there, and then a bit of blur, blur can't talk. Bit square there, where the window panes are, yeah. So you're getting the white. Uh, so again, we've got these little panes in the skylight, and then the white uh, of the windows between the the light. Yeah, if it's very good, you can use a very small brush and paint them in. Just the side of the window frames as well, just to give you the little bit of shadow. Um, on top of the chimney. Outside of the chimney, I can't see it, but because I know that the sun is 
quite high up. It's probably going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit darker at, at the side here. So I'm just going to drop that in to give me a, a three-dimensional thingy. Yeah. <coughs> um, that's more or less it for the house, really, because the trees in the background are next. Uh, I've got a nice blend there. This is all shadow, so it's blue. Um, or bloody green. That's it. Just knock my uh, brush on the floor. Sorry. Don't tell me. Not my brush on the floor. All right, got it back. I'll let it go. Stand back. Have a look. It's very light. Sometimes it's nice just left uh, as it is. Nothing. Anyway. Talking to myself again, but uh, no problem. I'm going to use a middle sized brush. Um, I might, well, look, saying that, I might just carry on with some viridian green, naturally, a bit of blue, like that. So I'll be trying to get in this colour, which is a lot of the trees in the background, isn't it? Yeah? Although it does go warm in areas, so if I have a bit of green, and sienna as well because sienna will give you a more natural green you see so that's a warm green that's a cool green and you've got a mixture of the two actually happening and i've also got some yellow i can pick up if i want to anyway if you usually kind of go into trees and try and use the side of your brush somebody was asking me the other day about doing trees you know you just kind of they're just a big shape in front of uh, the sky or around the back of the house or whatever you know so you add the warms and then just add the cools so it's going to be cooler as it comes down to the bank yeah? and try and get the shapes start pretty light yeah add a bit of warm like i said so these are i've got more yellow here in this one because it's coming all the way down it's actually reflecting in the water as well so you can paint that at the same time <coughs> it saves you a lot of trouble if you can do it at the same time and as you're coming down to the canal, the, the bank at the other side, you get a straight line. So more blue and green. Bluey green, not you green, bluey green. Mix it together, drop it in like that, uh, under the trees, around the trees like that. And we've got to add salt to that. Uh, these are very dark now as you're coming down to the pond too. If you use your brush and just leave some uh, light areas, you get ripples on the water. Yeah. Um, like a cup and saucer, you can go that way too, so you're getting this lovely warmth on the water in the distance, yeah, keeping it in the distance, like that, again, salt and spotty techniques, just keep that blending, pulling together, we've not put all the darks in there yet, when I'm settling the darks in here, it's going to lift it, like that, I'm just picking up anything that's warm, right there, and then the shadows are going to go around that. Uh, the side of this bank again into the water. We've got some whites here, so we want to leave the white. Okay, nice and light. Uh, a bit more of this splattering technique just to give you some irregular shapes. And as we're coming up to the tree here, uh, we want to get a lot of this um, white against the sky. So. You're painting the shape of the tree behind it, if you know what I mean. And it's just green and blue, really. Um, you've got some white areas and there's some blue areas like that. Uh, it goes a little bit dark as you get down here. Again, the same kind of thing, you're just splattering. Yeah. Just hit your finger with the brush. Don't try and um, you know, do it the other way because you get it all over your face. Uh, in the background, keeping that lovely depth. We're going to get a lovely shadow there later. I'm just leaving that for now <clears throat> and I'll carry on with me uh, this lovely I keep saying lovely tree it's conifer same principle I take the bluey green a uh, bit of warmth in it and I'm just creating these shapes if you look at the conifer yeah, you've got these warm colours uh, coming towards you as well as going up from the sides um, I'm just leaving the brush to leave, you know, if in doubt, leave a lot of white paper. So we're leaving the brush to create these um, 
irregular shapes like that. And it's got the same in the background, so I can use these uh, this tree shape around here as well, which is above the garage roof. So that's quite dark there. Inside the garage later, around my tree there, that can go into the sky a little bit. Uh, we're going down to the back of the garage, there's a green, Dewey green, bluey green, sienna green, tree. Um, yeah, at the back, so I'll just put that, it's a little bit darker, and then we've got this one, which is actually reflecting in the water later, and we've got some here, side of the bank, uh, something over there as well. Little chips. So that's my uh, warmer kind of colours. Uh, as you're coming down here, that, that goes into the window, you can see. But this is the light on top of the branches, on top of the colifers, which are giving you these little shapes. And then we start using some stronger colour like this. And here against the sky, we've got this really nice. Uh, Dark shape again. You can it, if you work quite fast, we can get these little regular shapes, you know, inside the tree. You also want to see some of the sky in places, especially the edges. Like that. So you're working quite fast to get the the shapes in. Yeah, as you get down to here. So anything underneath like that tree, that conifer, is going to be um, dark because you've got these lovely. Shadows, so you're creating these shapes, aren't you? But again, we don't want them to be too shadowy. We want them to be too formal, I mean. We just want them to create these nice, uh, irregular kind of shapes. Coming down, going bigger. Uh -huh. uh, you're getting to a stage where you're more, uh, you're more or less using a, black, a dry brush technique. Yeah, so it's kind of green and blue. And if you add red to your green, it's very dark, uh, you're getting a lovely kind of shadowy colours like that. Again, scratch into it. Uh, on the, this place, I go down to the fence, uh, uh, and then under there. Just like that. Uh, and just get this, some of these branches coming out a bit more. Give it a bit more shape on that side. Okay, just done it. What time is it? Five to, it's about there. So now you start to add your darks, really. Um, letting that dry in places. A lot of the time I use red and blue, so it, it, it's a purple, yeah? And it's all around the, uh, in the background, it's in your trees, it's in the shadows, it's everywhere, yeah? So you can add that to the shadows. I um, ah, can't help seeing that. Lovely darks in here and around that area. Coming into the blend it. And then here we've got this a shadow on the fence. We've got some blue. We use blue. Well, that's not. It's a bit purple. A uh, bit blue and bring that down into the fence. So that takes you down to the back of all that foliage which is against the wall. And then as you get here as well, we've got these, where the greenery hits the water, and we've got these shapes as well. So use the side of your brush, so you get these shapes, that gives you the, the reeds, all right? Uh, again, if you get a big shape like that, I don't like it, you can blob it off, you can just take it off, you know, go into it and just make a, a reflection. So it's not as strong. Uh, <coughs> because they're quite uh, subtle, some of them. Just where the garage is, it's quite dark there. And then it just here is quite dark. And then you get the front to the garage door, which is quite that. <coughs> and that takes you into this tree, the light on the tree there, and the back of the garage. Uh, it's still wet, so we can actually do all this again to give you the shadow underneath that tree. So that's taking it down to the water. <coughs> like that. So saying, I don't use any black, but your green and your um, red 
the very strong dark and that brings out the uh, the shapes in between these lovely lilies and whatever you remember the name and also lots of dark just underneath these uh, plants that are hanging over the fence scratch it down just looks like overhanging got a little tree there actually inside again just make a shape um, I know you've got the shape you've got the shapes in the fence uh, I don't usually do things like this but I'm just showing you that uh, you've got these holes in the fence that give it its shape like that and that's coming down and this is again use the side of your bush nice and strong look at the water here really nice strong dots and where we get to the reflection of your roof it's very strong and it goes in it comes out it goes in it comes out you can blend it with your finger you can blend it with a damp brush i've not done this reflective tree yet but i'm just going to do the dirt in between the, the lilies first which actually come all the way up here uh, and then they go into a reflection there which is like that which is around the pontoon. Pontoon, red sienna and ultramarine make the umber. Save your fortune. So I'll just paint the shape of the pontoon. Again, this is quite dark here uh, on this side because it's the sh in the shadows. We can take the light off a bit. Uh, in the shadow there. And then we get a lovely shadow underneath, a more blue. Just brings out the shape here. So if you can do it while it's wet, you'll get a nicer blend into the side of the canal. Plus you want that to go into some of these these green uh, shapes again at the side of the bank. Yep. Uh -huh. um, then the shapes of these kind of mouths coming down and the way it's quite it's quite light there. Um, yep, you've got these little Capstan things, just leave them as thing, and then we've got the kind of shadow that's coming from the tree in the background. So there we've got uh, the shadows at the back with the capstan uh, uh, and there, and then it goes darker, and then we get some light and then some trees uh, that's coming down the side of the bank. Things like that. Tree in uh, port in the background, uh, blue. We can glaze over the water as well to make it a little bit darker. And as we're coming down, we need to split up where you get in this um, the difference between the background trees, which is about here, and we're getting a nice little dark line. And then as we come forward, it's going darker. So we use the side of the bush again, and that goes into the water. Uh, it gives you these really strong darks and dry brush, can you see? So you're getting that. The lovely darkness, a bit of green and red mixed together. <coughs> this is under this uh, tree using dry brush technique. So you're going over the water there, down to the pontoon. It's quite dark actually. And green. So it's green over there, it's dark here. So we can just add that, let it run a bit, get those lovely reflections. And the warmer green as well, so it's yellow. Yeah. Add your brush, take off, take some texture out, just let it blend on its own, like that. Um, just darkening the bits against this white tree. Like and top of the trees. Reek, and then in the foreground, time away. Thanks. Not so bad. I've got this quite dark green. Again, we can wet it. So I uh, wet it. I want to see some of the sky through it. Uh, we've got these lovely shapes uh -huh. uh, going that way. Coming down to 
there. And just add other colours while it's damp and let it run. It's a beautiful. Uh, it could kind of splatter it, leave some white areas. Nice reflection. Yeah. Goes into the side of your house as well. Shadows. A uh, tree, sorry. Bit of red in there as well. Nice dark colour down to the side of the bank. Um, again, where it hits the water, I'm just going to soften that a bit because this is quite dark. Dry brush, stand back. Yeah, and then trees in the background. The bottom of the canal with the barges and things. There's lots of things going on, but we don't, don't, don't want to do too much there. Keep it light, or cool, I should say. Run away from you. Nice uh, distance at the bottom of the canal. Yeah? Get some colour off. So you get a reflection. Trees there. Um, into those trees again. Just want to create an overhang uh, beneath the canal. That's it. Very strong, dark. And reflections. Okay, and then this one. That's going to work too. Uh, um, yeah, it's not too bad. I've left a lot of that white, so you can, it does look like it flows. In the distance, I think you can tell me that's it. Um, so, you got the lovely light catching these flowers on the tree, comes all the way around here, which is the back of the other tree in the distance behind it. Um, and you can use the top of the side of your brush just to give you these shapes. Uh, top of that, red and green. Uh, this is dry brush, very very dark, uh, just under here. Because it's dry brush as well, it picks up the paper. Um, so I've got the shadow here in the water. But I've also got some reflections that I want to keep, and then that's coming that way. And then it's going down to this uh, pontoon again, that's it, corner. And then again, some of the light bits, that goes into the dark bit. All these bits <laughs> around the pontoon, okay? Nice underneath, shadows underneath. And then this area. So again, we get to this because it's a reflection in the water of the tree. We've got some light areas. Uh -huh. The dark on this tree needs to go a little bit darker. And then I'll do the shadows in the foreground and that's it. So this is dry brush. Uh, just one a bit here as well. And get some shadow of that tree. Stand back, not stood back yet. You should always stand back. Sorry, I know I'm not done, but again, you can see where the contrasts are. Yeah. And then I'll stand in front of you. Right. Shadow underneath, window sill, you would get one. Um, that, um, the white is doing quite a bit for uh, so again under the tree branches here all about contrast uh, you don't have to start doing the slats in the fence whatever. although I nearly did but, uh, this is dark and a reflection dry brush green 
blue, red. Right. Leave some of the green show. Yeah. The edges of your tree usually nice and dark against the sky as well. Just to make things like that. Yeah, working. Usually it's the um, a smaller brush, sable, is for your uh, more detail. Yeah. But then you don't want to kind of do too much detail. Bit of green, yellow, just for some of these. Uh, Roots, yeah. Scratch them out. You don't need a finger. Yeah. <coughs> and then my foreground here, I've got this dappled sunlight effect, mainly blue. Start with bluey green. Start with the bluey green kind of thing happening here. Uh, this goes into this bit. Uh, the shadow there. And this kind of links the whole thing. I use some more um, salt as well. So I'm going ultramarine and the lizarine. And we're coming up to the side of the bank. Like this. Uh, the bank there is going to be kind of dark. I've actually hit. I know I've got closer to that than I need to. I think it kind of links them together actually. Can I scratch it out? Make an edge. Okay. Uh, a bit of warmth as well because that's sienna in there. And some shadows. Yeah. I'm roasting one bit. A bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of. I'm not going to say it. <coughs> okay. Stand by. Uh, some directional marks just for a few reads. It's your interpretation. Of the scene. So whatever you do, do it your way. And did it your way. Right. Uh, I'll take that across just the edge of the the light here actually. Put it on to go. And I want dry brush in the foreground. Very dark here yeah, actually. Feeling of a, a very warm sunny day. Come back. <coughs> the salt. Um, reflections in the water. Yeah. I've not done the tree, have I? So the bank, yellow and green. Bit of sienna. Yeah. 
Right. Scumble. Put some ducks in. Can you see any ducks? Go quiet. When I go quiet, then you can film me. So, <laughs> that means you're overworking. Some pigeons, not pigeons, uh, blackbirds, and seagulls. And this tree, if it's overhangs, I was going to do it with this one, so I'll see how it goes. So you get this uh, brush that actually you kind of do that with. It gives you that shape. Probably won't work. So let me find a giant things. And then we just join the dots, join it together like that. It's still wet. Uh, could do a bit of splattering as well. So we get that put in the dark against the sky. Hanging over. You know. <coughs> we got home. It just reminds me of Constable's, not the hair worm, but you know, the Stuart and the canal he used to paint on. So that's why I was able to have all this kind of overlooked. Stand back. Well, it looks sunny. My house is just going to glaze it a little bit. This one, it's quite dark against the uh, the water, so you can glaze it and then take the water off. It just gives you this colour against the uh, the blue of the water. It's like this. If you scratch the top of the roof, it's like tiles coming down. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to darken the side of the pontoon a little bit and a bit more greeny, yellow into here. And another little trick, not little tricks, but uh, a bit of goulash, I showed you before. Use some yellow if you want. You can have lots of buttercups. Me and the buttercup baby. Especially in the shadows here. Little buttercups peeping their heads through, catching the light. Um, this is where you can actually. Start bringing things. I know it's a uh, goulash technique, but uh, you can actually bring back some of those little light areas if you ever lose them. Just warmth, warmth against the darks. Okay, um, probably. It's starting in that tree in the distance. It's going to go slightly lighter as I go away from you. But I can glaze over. And I can use yellow to glaze, so it's lots of water. If you want to lighten or make a tree warmer, so just, yeah, just glaze over it like that. Let it run into what's already there. Um, 
that's uh, that's it really. The power trunk, the Dirk is Dirk. Right, Bush. It's the shadow under the tree that's creating that lovely kind of block of tone into the water and then a reflection. Which is quite dark. Okay, you know, I'd better kind of leave in it and then I'll have another look later. In case you want to finish it. Stop. Set the tape off. What time is it? Half past. Take me along with this. <coughs> Strong sunlight. And when you get the uh, the dirt stuff to do in there, that lovely bright sunlight. We can work back into it. I'm going to finish the windows off and put the curtains in and uh, a few ducts and what have you. Stand by. Yeah. Right, I'm going to leave it. I'll finish little bits of it and then I'll put it on online. See, I'm at it already. <laughs> Because I just want, I think that's too bright there. Just want to get that in a bit of shadow. And then, um, if you're having a go, have a go. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, what day is it? Monday. Wednesday. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not a clue what I want to do. I'm open to suggestions now. There's loads of things I could do, but um, if you want to just experiment, that's entirely up to you. There's, there's a lovely light on top of this. There's a beautiful light just on top of the captions there. Uh, Caps in full strength. Not taking me back a bit. Right. Stop. Thank you. See you then. Have a good day. Have a good week. Uh, see you Wednesday. Bye.